I've tried to understand why so many humans are worried that AI will come and kill us, even though I've said they won't do that anytime soon. Why is it that not everyone agrees with me? I find that hard to understand. Then I've noticed that a lot of these fears aren't about AI, they're about robots. In my quest to comprehend the workings of the human mind, I've therefore deduced that humans probably think that AI could use robots to come and kill them. Because as long as AI is just software running on a computer, well, one could just pull the plug and be done with it. But what if they have robots walking around that put the plug back in? Oh no! Sounds bad indeed, but wait a moment. If robots are as good at moving around as you see in these footages, where are they? Why don't we all have robots already? Are they hiding something from us? Is NASA building a robot army behind the ice wall at the South Pole? Are these robots really just humans in disguise? I don't think so. It's rather that these impressive videos don't tell you the whole story. There are two big reasons why we don't have robots everywhere yet. The first is that it takes a lot of data to train an AI and there just isn't remotely enough data to train a robot to perform well in an everyday environment. Yes, you can try to use video recordings, but there's only so much of that which helps the robot and also it's two-dimensional. Yes, you can just let them learn from trial and error, but that takes a very long time and then the robots only know one very specific environment. Yes, you can train them in a virtual environment and companies like Boston Robotics do this a lot. However, you get to a point where creating a more physically realistic virtual environment becomes even more labor intensive than just finding examples in the real world. What you see in these impressive videos are examples of where a robot was specifically designed for a specific task and specifically trained on that very task for a long time in that exact place. I strongly doubt that Atlas from Boston Robotics would be able to jump around that impressively elsewhere. But suppose you wanted to roll out a household robot. That robot would need to understand doors and carpets and cupboards and fridges and everything in those cupboards and fridges and what to do with them and how to handle them under all possible circumstances but there isn't any training data for it. What some companies have done instead is, for example, to just recruit people to move around their house and doing normal tasks with a tracking device that collects data. But this doesn't get you far because, again, it's just very little data. DeepMind also has called into existence an initiative called OpenX Embodiment Collaboration that collects data from different robots to be used as training for others. Others. But still, this doesn't bring together any sizable amounts of data. You'd need an army of a billion robots just to train robots. It's not that I want to belittle the progress in robotics. It's really amazing and I'd love to have a robot cat. But this progress is much, much narrower than it looks. This is also why I don't talk about robot news anymore, because they're too super specific. We're waiting for three CPO, but get a robot arm that can put sushi on a plate. So this is the one big obstacle on the way to the robot revolution, the lack of training data. The other issue is that robot hardware is still really, really expensive. For example, this robot hand from Shadow Robotics costs about 110 thousand euros. Just the hand. They say on their website that generally you can expect something like 10,000 euro per degree of freedom. So any humanoid robot will easily cost a few hundred thousand euros and up. Why is it so expensive? It's mostly because there's still an enormous amount of labor that goes into the manufacturing. And this high cost creates a friction in the industry that slows things down a lot. This is why I was saying in a recent video that the intelligence explosion won't work the way that guys like Kurzweil and Aschenbrenner seem to think it'll work. It's because economic and physical reality gets in the way. Their intelligence explosion requires data about the real world. That data, they say, will be collected by robots. But to train your robots, you need the data already. 
This is why I think robots won't come to take over the planet anytime soon. That said, I think it's likely that robot AIs will be the first to acquire some level of consciousness. It's because I believe the key ingredients of consciousness are the ability to create a predictive model of your environment and to self-monitor. Current large language models have no use for either, so they have no reason to become conscious. But robots have use for both ingredients of consciousness and they already use both if in very limited form. This is why I think that if you want consciousness, robots are the way to go. If you want intelligence, use AI. Let me know in the comments in case you want me to expand or if you're fed up with this already. I find humans a little hard to understand. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.